Cause it's a big change The 180 Your life will be the same The 180 Yes, yes, the 180 Here we are um, I am so thrilled and excited to have Terrell Hagler on the show today. Woo woo! Um, I'm gonna tell y'all a little something about Terrell. I'm gonna intro, intro him, but he can say hi. You can say hi. You can say hi. You don't have to. Ask hey guys, him. how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, Terrell is a Philadelphia based garbage man who has generated support for sanitation workers during the pandemic through his Instagram account, Your Fave Trash Man. His Instagram account was created to give residents an inside look at what sanitation workers experienced during the pandemic. The account has continued to grow in popularity throughout this year and upon noticing that his coworkers did not have the proper PPE to execute their jobs, Terrell started a customized ink t-shirt fundraiser to purchase PPE, hand sanitizers, and cleaning supplies. He raised over $32,000 to support these efforts and generated loads of support from the Philadelphia community with his hashtag support sanitation. So I'm pumped about having this Philly brother here as my guest. Let's welcome Terrell Hagler. <laughs> how, how are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm well, I, you know. Another day, growing trash. I can't complain. Yeah. So, so were you working earlier today, or do you have to? Work I did. Later? I did. I did. I worked seven to three today. Seven to three. Seven to three. Wow. What do, What does three o'clock feel? Once three o'clock's there, what does it feel like? Man, I hit three o'clock at like twelve. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, by twelve o'clock, I'm like, it has to be three o'clock. It has to be. <laughs> Especially now. But um, you know, we get through. The, you yeah. know. But it's cool. It's, it's, it's a good feeling when you, you're done your job, you look behind you, and all the streets are clean. Yeah, all the trash yeah. is up. It's a good feeling. Awesome. Um, so on the 180, we play games. And so I got a game, but this is the game before the game. Okay. Um, I, I, I've yet to do this on the show, but I think you're going you're gonna to rock. So we're going to play Finish the Lyrics to one of the most well-known songs of our generation. Oh boy. Mm -mm. Yeah, you, oh, know, boy. you know what it is, but you know, oh, so it's fine. Hey. So here, we, here we go. Here we go. Now, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute to sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Be Bel Air do, 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 do. <laughs> in West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playgrounds where I spent most of my days chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool and all. Still out, Max and all wax. I don't know that part. <laughs> and all shooting some people outside of the school when a couple, when a couple of guys, of guys uh -huh. we were up to no good. Uh -huh. They started making trouble with my neighborhood. I got a one little fight, and my mom got scared. She said, You're moving with your uncle and your aunt and belly. Belly. I was for a cab, and when it came near, the license plate said fresh, and it had a dice in the mirror. Dice, yeah, I, dice I, 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 in the mirror. Right, right, right. If anything, I could say that this cab was rare, but I thought, no, nah, forget it. Yo, Holmes. The Bel Air. I uh -huh. pulled up. Yep. Yeah, uh -huh. you definitely got my Philly car taken just now. You definitely. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm, I mean, I'm, not like... gonna, I'm not gonna be able to get a cheesesteak anywhere now. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just didn't know like two little parts, just two little parts. Um, but you you know, that I, we still give you a round of, we give you a, a horn. You get one horn. You could have got three, Thank you. but you get one. Yeah, no. I, I, I deserve a half horn, but it's okay. See, okay, here's the thing. I'm going to be totally transparent. I'm 31 okay, yeah. years old, but I live my life mm -hmm. like an 80 or old R&B, gospel. Okay. I'm talking like, it was like, in school, it was like, who's your favorite singer? I'm like, duh, Donnie Hathaway. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah. And yeah. he wasn't alive when you were. No, he was not. Yeah. When you yeah, were, my friends were listening to like Biggie. I was listening to Luther back. Hey, woo. there you go, <laughs> Big Luther too. Big Luther, yes. not Little Luther. Big yes, Luther. Yes, Big Luther. <laughs> oh, Big Luther was a gem. <laughs> um, okay, so so okay, so you you semi passed that test. Now we're gonna really get into the Philly trivia. Okay, so that's the boy. Thing right this here. is. It's oh exciting. man, I'm gonna have to move after this. this is, that's, <laughs> no. that's 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 the point. It's okay. No, these these actually are kind of challenging questions. So, 
I'm going to preface it with that. And then if you do really well, you can feel really great. And then if you don't, it's my fault. Okay. So which one of the following holidays was invented in Philly? Grandparents' Day, Independence Day, Mother's Day, or Thanksgiving? Grandparents' Day is not a holiday. Okay, I love it. I love it. Uh, you can <laughs> let the grandparents know, though. I love, love you, Grandma, but it's not a holiday. Um, I mean, Philly is the start of the nation, so I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Independence You're going to go with Independence Day? Okay, I understand, but, uh, right, it's okay. It was, it was Mother's Day. That was random. I looked really? it up. I don't know how, I mean, yeah. So oh, this see? will encourage people. It would be a Philly mom, though. It really would be a Philly mom to invent Mother's Day. I love that. I can, yes. I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> now, number two, what is the reason Philadelphia is called the city of brotherly love? And I, I got some options for you. Uh, so you can do process of elimination again if you want. Uh, a, because of its penchant for welcoming diverse cultures. B, because it literally is what Philadelphia means in Greek. Literally is, is what it means in Greek. Or C, because two brothers founded the city after a long feud and wanted to memorialize the, their reconnection with the nickname for their city. Was well, not C. Not that okay. Um, the Greek one sounds really interesting, and my spirit is telling me to pick that one. So I'm going to pick that. I love that your spirit told you correct. See? There you go. There you go. Yes, it is. It literally, Philadelphia means uh, brotherly love. We love and agree. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. That's dope. Uh -huh. Now, this famous Philly group that's featured on a late night show now has been holding a picnic every year since. Oh, the Roots. Okay. Roots. Yeah, you get, yeah, you get that. that. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. I, knew, I knew that. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, you're going to know this one too. Uh, the Rocky Statue and the Rocky Steps are located in front of this museum. Oh, art museum. Yeah. Yeah, work out, work out at the art museum. Hey, so you run up them steps? Well, so the, people don't know, there's actually a trail that you can run up the steps, make a right, run towards the back, and run down the back of the steps to like a whole lawn and stuff. So I kind of like do the around. Oh, okay. It's a little, not like a little integral thing, you know. Yeah, you're more committed than just the steps. You're going to do, you know, the trail. Yeah, and yeah. The, the, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm only 5'5", five five, so all I have is to, be, to, be, to have muscles. I'm not tall. So if you're not tall, you have to have muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, bro. I'm with you, bro. That, that's, a, <laughs> that's a life lesson. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're not tall, you got to have muscles. Yeah. Uh, Terrell said it here on the 180. Breaking right. news. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> all right. True or false, Philadelphia cream cheese is in fact made in Philly. There's a Coca-Cola factory. <laughs> I know there's a Hers factory. There's a Tasty Cake factory. Mm. Not seen. But I'm gonna say I'm gonna say false. That is correct. It is. It is. There is no. Yeah. yeah. Philadelphia cream cheese is made in upstate New York for some reason. Okay. We don't know why, but that's where well, they chose to make it. That's where they chose to make it. And. This is the final question that you cannot lose. You, you, you're going to get correct. You just have to use the Philly slang John three different ways. Okay. Okay. Um, ready? Uh-huh. Yeah. Number one, the John over there is annoying me. Number two, uh -huh. I found this John outside. I, that, it must have been the sad John. I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and number three, what color was the John that just went past the house going 95 miles an hour? <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just going to give that a message because <laughs> slow down. That's the message. Yeah. Slow down. Be limit okay. 45. Right. Huh. Okay. Well, thank you. And thank you for, for playing along. And, oh, yeah. It was, yeah. I, um, I'm not gonna say I feel better about being in Philadelphia. I'm gonna be honest, I don't. Um, I'm not gonna check my phone after this either because I know I'm gonna, you know, I have some text messages once people see this. So, 
Right. Yep. No, you, you, did, you did a great job. You did a great, great job. Um, and now I want to ask you a few questions just to get to know you a little better. Yeah. And um, there are strange, random, weird questions, but very insightful when you get the answer. If you could be any water bound animal, which animal would you be? I definitely would be a dolphin. Hey, yes, yes. Yeah, I, that I, would I, be. I, yes. Yeah, dolphins just live their life free, carefree. They migrate, they have fun, interactive with people. They're intelligent. They just have great spirit. Yeah, dolphins seem so, be. like. Free, just free. Yeah, yeah it's free. True. I'm yeah. glad you said that. I agree. I would say the same thing. Yeah. We're Definitely be a dolphin. Now, you travel around Philadelphia day after day. What's one of your favorite places to be in the city? I love Kelly Drive. I, uh, in the summer, I walk Kelly Drive. I run Kelly Drive. I sometimes park and want to do lots on the border. Let nature just take over with my thoughts. But Kelly Drive is like one of my favorite spots. Just to go get away from the game. And tell me, because, now. because I'm not, I don't know what Kelly Drive is. What, is it like? Yeah, oh, it. so remember how we were talking about the art museum? Yeah. So there's like a little trail, we call it Bow House Row, where all the rowing houses are for all the colleges and, and the, the, row, uh, mm -hmm. the row groups and stuff. So that's actually called Kelly Drive. There's actually a path that you can bike and run. It's a trail, um, but it sits right on the water. Nice. So literally, I mean, if you were crazy enough, you could jump into the water <laughs> by Kelly Drive. Mm -hmm. It's uh, crazy enough. Yeah, yeah, but it's the nature, the trees, the grass, the... Just the scenery is just a great moment to send out sometimes. Nice. On a nice summer night, you know, the breeze and everything, water and, and everything just kind of gets really quiet and still. Mm -hmm. Have a moment. Only hear your thoughts. Pretty, pretty dope. We gotta, we gotta take you to Kelly Drive. Yeah, you, I just like started meditating in the middle of you describing yeah. it. I said, oh, <laughs> present. take a yes. deep breath. There you go. Yeah, no, for real. I'm serious. It's, it's so dope. Well, I got to check it out. I'm close enough to Philly. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah. yeah. Check it out. Uh, if you were to host your own talk show, who would be your first guest? My first guest that I would like to talk to would be Barack Obama. Mm. Would be Barack Obama. Definitely would like to talk to Barack. Not about everything that everybody knows, but about everything that we don't know. You know, his mental health during the presidency mm. level. How did he balance being the president and being a black husband and a black father? And yeah. Just the little intricate things that, you know, we don't always hear the actual human side of somebody in his position. Right. We don't always get to see and talk. Uh, yeah, then like life after, you know, what does he do? now like how do you go from being the president to just living a normal life i know you're on tour and you're speaking and all this stuff but what do you do for go, go to top golf and you're not on tour or something you know just yeah. that kind of stuff i think would really be dope you know yeah that's i hope for both of us oh yeah that's this is actually gonna happen like we're, we're we're making it happen right now both of us are gonna have an opportunity to sit and chat with Barack Obama, yes. For sure. For sure. Let's put it in the universe. Yes. Speak it, speak it into existence. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm, I'm coaching. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. We so be in here. Is so. <laughs> Listen, we be in here having a revival. Eric, you better cut it out. <laughs> yes. I'm ready. Okay. Oh, my gosh. See, look, I got my slippers. Oh, okay. All right. I'm done. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I, I did a little research on you and I know that you were a dancer and a performer yeah. and you still might be, so I'm not going to take that away from you. You dance, <laughs> you perform. Um, so tell us about your, what drew you to performing? I'm um, okay. So um, as a child, I had a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. My mom said I was just, I was more football. I was just any, any and everything I was talking. I was just so active and, um, where we grew up at in North mm. Philly, there was a famous black theater called Freedom Theater. I'm mm. um, right by Temple's campus. And one day my mother was walking past. I was about three years old. And it was like, hey, you have a young child. We have preschool classes, this, that, and the third. And my mom signed me up at three. And I went, I was there from 1992 to about 
Wow. Yeah, so I actually started off in theater and doing plays. And then when I turned eight, um, one of the teachers was like, you move really well. You should try majoring in dance. I turned into a dance major and that, that got me to go into creative and performing arts high school. And then I got to do some uh, college studies at Coppin State with a minor in dance. And then after about a year, I had the opportunity to tour with a dance company locally here in Philly. Oh, nice. Um, yep. And then even because of Freedom Theater, I was able to be a part of a cultural exchange where we took 60 young performers to Panama for a cultural exchange in 2011. I, I, was, I auditioned for Spider Man on Broadway and made it. Ooh. It's, it's when they asked me to sing. <laughs> <laughs> you you made it so far and then yeah. said, and now sing yeah and then they was like we'll call you <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean just to be 19 in a room of 1500 guys and make yeah. make the cut and Spider-Man on Broadway in New York so yeah so I don't dance as much now I'm more choreographed and may help out here and there but yeah these okay. knees yeah. Well, no, that's that's really exciting. So my my brother, um, he's a dancer, and he went to University of the Arts. So okay, yeah, I know you are. So he knows Wayne, Wayne St. David. Probably, I love that as teacher. Oh, okay, probably. So pro yes, yeah. yes, probably. I'll have to ask him. I'll look. Brett, I know you're listening. You know, you know Wayne. He'll, yeah, he'll yeah. Know. Wayne is like my dance uncle. So if he knows Wayne, then he knows Sean. The dance world is about this big. Right, right. Uh, what's your brother's name? Uh, Brett. Brett, last same last name. Uh -huh. Yeah. Does he dance for anybody now? He did. Um, he was touring for a while, so he was like. Most recently, he was in Cats touring. Before that, okay. he was in Motown. So he's been out of Philly for a while, and he was in Japan. New York. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I have a, I have a friend that went to U Arts, and he did the cruise ship. So he would dance oh, okay. for the cruise ships. Yeah. Yeah, you know, those, those, the traveling performers, that's, that's a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. just and being then, away and moving around, yeah. and it's a lot. So, within that experience of performing, and, and tell us about kind of how you went from there to then, now you're doing sanitation work. What was that transition like, or was it? Um, it was it was, was a it? transition, you know. I was just, you know, I actually had my first daughter at 22, okay. And that starving artist Lowry does not put food on the table, so that's when I started um, searching for W 2s And I did a, I did so many things. I was, I worked at the hospital as environmental service. I worked at a gym. Um, mm -hmm. um, as like a personal trainer and mentor, okay. um, did construction, like demo work. Um, I was a floor technician, so I used to strip wax and clean floors. Um, I was a stage hand, so I worked at a theater, helping help building sets. Um, the Prince Music Theater, a famous this is now the Film Festival Theater downtown Philly. Nice. Um, I was a, a assistant stage manager for Center City Opera. I was a bartender. Yes. I mean, I tried carpentry school. I just <laughs> you had a I lot was, of odd jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially as yeah. a as an artist who like yeah. is trying to make some money, but also yeah. try to do that thing. Yeah. And also yeah. Yeah. need yeah. to make I, money. I dibble dad in real estate. Like, so it, um, yeah. And it just you know, all came to a bubble. And then uh, December, 2019, I got hired as a sanitation. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we'll talk more about that. Yeah. I know that now you are working one of the things um, beyond your campaign to get more PPE for sanitation workers. Now you're working on getting hazard pay for sanitation workers. Um, and this is really admirable. I, I so admire that you not only said, okay, let's get you all masks, get hand sanitizer, yeah. get all that stuff, but like now let's actually get you hazard pay. So what's something that you've discovered as you've begun to delve into, into the politics of changing legislature? Literally that. It is, um, the world of politics, level of patience, and takes a level of grace. And if you don't have a strong foundation and morals and values, it will be too much. Mm -hmm. 
But um, I think when you're passionate about something, and I think when you really believe in something, you can break down all those barriers, over all those walls. You can out over all those things. Um, especially when I have a gift of putting really good people around me. Um, yeah. So I've been kind of building a, a team of politicians who are down for the calls, and you know I've talked to them on the on a regular and. I think coming soon we'll be able to really put and really make some noise and really saying I just want to see that I want to start the conversation. You know, mm-hmm. How we I'm not naive. I know it's not going to happen overnight. But we, but we can just start the conversation. I think a great step in the right direction um, for us. To get Starting, you know, because I, I don't just want it for Philadelphia. I want it across the nation. I want it across the nation. I think if Philadelphia could be the pillar and the start of it, and then the other cities could into it and other legislatures and other govern, uh, governments uh, statewide, and then hopefully my, with my guy Biden in there, he'll see it, see it as important. Yeah. Well, that, that's awesome. And, and, and the fact that you're um, speaking to the need to have a moral foundation in the world of politics, because, you know, of course, I've watched the West Wing, you know, I've right, watched this, right, you know, and there's right. always drama and there's always people pulling people in 50 million directions. And yeah. too often, it doesn't always look like the, you know, what is most moral or what is most uh, best for the most people will always win out. So it was great to know that, you know, you're surrounding yourself with people that you can trust and are aware of like, okay, we have to have a moral foundation. Yeah. And- yeah. It's, a, it's, important. it's really important because you can't really get positive change with you know, some negative energy or someone who's only in it for themselves. You know, That's you right. Can't. Message. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> We'll do that in post, you know, the, the, the message will sure. land right where it was supposed to be. <laughs> um, but y- yes, absolutely. You can't get a positive outcome with, yeah, negative energy. Yeah. Um, with, as someone who suddenly has had attention thrust on you via your Instagram account, it's gained more and more traction. How are you managing life with the expectations of content from followers like do you do you get nervous before posting are you do you have things scheduled like how how has this sudden surge of success affected you so my manager shout out to my manager okay ariana queenan ariana queenan right here right now um she's amazing she's really um she's, she's been my backbone she's really helped me uh grow this platform um he always says, you are like Rihanna on your Instagram. You just do what you want and people love it. So that's kind of like, um, she calls it that guerrilla style yeah. social media. You know, I just kind of go, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm posting because that's what it is. It's mine. And I promise always to be truthful and authentic. So be planning to post something and I just I just it's not me as a person I just post what I feel I post what I think the public should know and then sometimes I use it as an education um mm-hmm. to really try to shift the narrative and shift the perspective of the public on what a sanitation worker looks like mm-hmm. people already have in their minds what we do what we look like and how much we make and they're wrong on all three uh-huh. So, <laughs> yeah, what's what is uh like one stereotype that you want to just squash right now? That we're rich. That sanitation workers make so much money. I wish. <laughs> I wish. I'm I I can tell you my base salary is like thirty two thousand. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm an essential worker and I've right. been working through ought to work through both waves of the pandemic. hmm So that's why. We're not lazy. Can't be lazy and pick up trash. That's what we do. <laughs> right, 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 right. You Not, just, especially you when really... people, especially when people throw out things like their transmission. Oh, yeah, that's heavy. That's bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You, you, you. If no one else display that, you know, you can be a sanitation worker and you're not late. You are not lazy. No, 
the commitment to both activism and still doing your job and then coming on podcasts like the one <laughs> being on Kelly Clarkson's show. You yeah. Know. You know, you, you make time for what's important. And I tell my manager all the time, no platform is too big and no platform is too small to hear my story. So literally, if if it if it goes along with my moral and my values as as an advocate, then it's a yes, no matter what. That's beautiful. So tell us a little bit of, uh, tell us a little bit more about your story and a moment that felt like a one eighty, a moment that you had to make a turn. Um, okay, I'll talk about my um the the, the time I decided to, to do my first book. Um, it was in the middle of June, and I think. It had been like three or four articles had came out about the trash delays. Um, if you don't know, here in Philly, in the middle of the summer, we got like five days behind. We were like a week wow. behind in trash. I mean, trash was piled up in front of people's door. All these articles were coming out. It's the sanitation workers' fault. They're calling out for no reason. They're lazy. They're taking all this time off. And I was like... They're rich. They're rich. <laughs> and I was like... Throw that in there. The public doesn't know that over 200 of us had contracted COVID and were wow. quarantining. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, it's time for me to say something. That artist in me, that, that, that the voice in me was like, yeah, you got to say something. You got to do something. So yeah. I believe it was June 17th. I posted my first post um, as your fave trash man. And I think the 180 point is when I started educating the public about what's really going on as a sanitation worker, and I started giving out trash updates. Every morning around seven o'clock, 7.15, I would let people know like, hey, in the real world, it's Wednesday. <laughs> and the trash world is last Friday. Wow. So if your trash day is last Friday, we coming for you today. And it was, we were able, because of those updates, the public was able to navigate the delays they wouldn't put the trash out too early. They wouldn't put the trash out too late. They would put it out just in time. And I, I believe through my updates and me just keeping the public aware, they were able, we were able to get out of the trash delay and actually catch up and get on our day. It took us three months, but we actually caught up and we're on our right day. Wow. And I think from there, it was just kind of a domino effect. I just, I was like, hey, if the public is on our side like this, we need masks and cleaning supplies. People are still getting sick. And there's three people in a truck. One person gets sick. That's three people that now have to quarantine. Yeah. So let's do our best to keep the trucks clean. But I told you my salary already. I don't have money every pay to go get cleaning supplies and use it in the truck. You know, so that's where the whole uh, t-shirt. Hey, there's the t-shirt. <laughs> t-shirt idea came out to... See if we could sell t-shirts and raise money to buy PPE and clean supplies and proper masks. I wear glasses. The, the city tried their best. I never bashed the city. No one was prepared for COVID to last this long. Right. So they did their best. But them giving us the big face shields that wrap around this way and come down to my sternum. And I wear <laughs> glasses. It's foggy. I can't see if I'm picking up trash or a dog. It just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you picked up a dog, man. Oh, you could I mean, up a dog that's trash. Happened. I don't know. We didn't. We didn't have possums in the truck, so. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. You, yeah. That's why. Yeah. That's why I'm saying, being a sanitation worker, your slash animal control slash a therapist, because people want to complain why diapers can't be recycled, then you got to really break it down to them. That diap diapers aren't recyclable. They're supposed to be in the trash can, not the recycling can. Ooh. But um, yeah, that was my 180. When I, that's when I really realized that I had a, I was creating a platform basically as a liaison between the department and the public to be a voice for sanitation workers and, like I said, shift the perspective and really give them an insight. And who knew that the public wanted to be on our side? Mm. Just didn't know how. Uh, my, my Instagram was a way for people to reach out to me, ask questions, get them answered, and me to post content and showing them the daily life. And then also ask for, you know, some grace and understanding on the, during the trash delays. Like, guys, I, we see the trash. We see it. <laughs> we, we're coming to get it. But if you put it out neatly and put it out better, we can get on and off your block quicker. So then, yeah. you know, have the public take some responsibility and help us out. <sighs> 
<laughs> I mean, this it, it is amazing that you know you you took the risk of speaking out, which so many people you know say, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah. And you were like, no, I need to say something. And then what you mentioned about discovering that the public was on your side, that the public could understand, the public could understand um, and, and offer grace uh, is, is incredible and uh, really important lesson in say it and trust that yeah. people have your side or people have your back, um, especially if you're coming from a good place. Yeah, if you, and like, like me with your faith, trash man, and building this brand and everything, like I've come down to my three pillars and it's just educate, advocate, and integrate. And that's basically all I want to do. I want to educate the public. I want to advocate for sanitation workers. And then I want to integrate the both of them so that we're working together. And as one unit, as one city, just trying to keep Philly clean. Mm. That's it. And and how did you come to those three pillars? I mean, that's, I love that. Uh, well, my manager hired a branding company. Uh, hey. his, name is, his name is Brandon Johnson with uh, True Theory. He's been amazing. Um, he's really, uh, he's really the Harry Potter of branding. He is magical. I mean, okay, the Brandon question, Johnson. I might. Yeah, True Theory. Yeah, no, for real, for real, True yeah. Theory. Um, he, uh, the questions he asked me and the, and the depths and the layers that he asked me to unveil really bore out what I want your fave trash man and what I want as a brand to be. And it's yeah. something that I, I, you know, I didn't have, I couldn't articulate it. I felt it. And it helped me, helped me form the words. And so now I, I have my branding language and I have my pillars and it's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into branding that I didn't know. Uh -huh. You know, it's okay that my manager knows and I Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and with um, like both the t-shirt and even the um, the handle, your fave trash man, did that exist before? Like what came first? Did you know, did the handle exist before you posted that? Um, okay, you know, so here's a, here, here's a story. Here's a story. Okay, here so, go, I'm excited. I told you earlier, I live my life like an idiot. Uh -huh, look at I have that. a special heart. I have a special place in my heart for the elderly. Uh -huh. And this is, there was this one elderly woman uh, that always came outside, um, one, to make sure we took all her trash, <laughs> and two, <laughs> to put her cans back. So she's older. So I start putting her cans back for her. And just one random day, we were, you know, I say hi, how you doing, everything. And she was like, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, baby. Oh, you, I just thank you so much. And I literally was like, I'm your fave trash man, aren't I? She was like, yeah, you my fave trash man. So <laughs> when, the, when, I, when I decided to do the Instagram, it was like, you think about your fave trash man. Like, you know, it just worked so well. So yes. that's literally how your fave trash man, the name, came about. Uh -huh. I was just uh, talking, talking, my talk, you know, like I do, I talk to everybody. I talk all day long. Um, <laughs> and I, she was like, yeah, you're my favorite trash man. So then in June, I was like, oh, there we go. Handle. Right. Oh, you my favorite trash man. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. <laughs> all right. All right, Miss Ethel. See you later. Uh, I hope her name really was Miss Ethel. <laughs> no, I know. See, I don't ask all those questions. Right, I right, want, right. Just give me your trash. I don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the, the name, I don't need yeah, Now we can speak. I'm going to keep it pushing. <laughs> <laughs> and then with the t-shirt, the um, with the logo, uh, how did that get created? How did that come about? Uh, I was just searching things, and um, I found it on the internet, and I found out that one of my coworkers had actually drew it and all the oh, wow. new things, and it's just, I asked him for permission. He said, yes, he said, I can have it. I can do what I want with it. It's mine. So... Um, yeah, so that's the one. And then I'm working on it, you know, this was like the first version of the t-shirt. Um, I'll give you, how about this? I'll give you a breaking story. Yes, I'm excited. Yes, please. Okay. Breaking news. Dun, dun, dun. Um, most likely, uh, by the end of November, definitely in the beginning of December, we will have another round of t-shirts. Yeah. Okay. If, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Different design, because we're always growing, different yeah. design, but we will have another round of t-shirts. For anybody that missed the first wave of the t-shirts, we are bringing them back for the holiday. 
Awesome. Yeah, no, that, that's really exciting because I, I do know that at a certain point, I don't know when, was it August or September? But I know at some, some point it was like, no more t-shirts. We yeah, don't have any more. August. 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 It, was, it was for four weeks. After four weeks, I mean, we, we sold 2,024 shirts. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So, but people, have, people are still DMing, DMing me about the shirts. So I'm like, this one, if you got this one, you got like the original because we're going to keep, you know, keep it fresh, keep it funky, alter the design just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we will, you heard it here first on 180. Hey. Yes. Three. We had three. There we go. <laughs> there we go. By the end right. of November, definitely beginning of December, for the holidays, you will have your fave Trashman t-shirts and some other merch. Oh, other additional merch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. We, you mentioned your coworkers. Um, and tell, tell me about your relationship with your coworkers in the sense of, I, I, don't, I don't know that people think about, you know, sanitation workers and like their relationships and the dynamics on the truck. So what, what was that journey like from your first day to now, like in terms yeah, of- Yeah, I, I have some coworkers that I consider family now. It hasn't even been a year yet. Um, not to be like, not to bring it down, but uh, my mother just passed away November 1st. Mm. Um, and the support that I felt from my coworkers, from my yeah. family, from everybody was just amazing. I, I just felt so supported. I felt love. People came to check on me. I still get people to text me, hey, how you feeling this morning? You know, I had my, my union was like, hey, take as much time as you need. Don't rush back to work. The, the job, everybody was doing great. Mm. So um yeah, yeah so that real I, care, genuine caring yeah caring for sure like, for sure yeah, for sure really for sure <laughs> somebody no. there um so so along with your coworkers on the truck what are those dynamics like you know oh yeah you have a driver you have a partner um so the driver is the one that's maneuvering in and out of all the tight spaces in and out of, you know, not hitting anybody's car. Uh -huh. So the city doesn't have to pay for anybody's car. I um, mean, you and your partner, you guys work together, throwing trash, going from one side to the other, um, you know, just communicating, running the hopper, running the back of the truck that's com uh, compressing the trash. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 you become, you, you have like a, and then, you know, if you have the same partner and driver every day, you build that relationship and right. you kind of um, just work with each other, you become your brothers or your sister, mm -hmm. whichever one. Because we do have female uh, sanitation workers and we have female drivers. So, hey, shout out. It's 2020. 2020. Women, women do this. Okay? Yes. Yes. Don't forget it. I'm going to try to get. My message button. Every other button is working. The message is not working. But you know, we'll do that in post. Um, okay, so in terms of the journey, what, what do you feel like is next? We talked about you're looking at shifting legislature um, to ensure that sanitation workers can get hazard pay, but are there things on the horizon that you're excited to do, initiatives you're excited to to begin? Yes, yes. Um uh I want to get into, I want, I want to always support sanitation. That is number one. Mm -hmm. But the second is I want, I feel in my spirit that my calling is shifting into more of a community leader and a community ad advocate. Awesome. Um, so I want to try to shift into that a little bit and see if it's for me. I want to do more things for my community. Um, I had a food drive um, October 10th. And we fed 1,500 families that day. Wow, that yeah, so I'm going, to do, I'm going to do another one November 21st, right before Thanksgiving. We're going to do another food drive in West Philly. Um, honestly, I want to get into the communications world. Uh, I'm really liking maybe being a press officer or a press secretary um, one day. Um, and everyone keeps telling me that politics is where I'm at. Hmm. So maybe state rep, maybe city council. Uh, my mother would always call me the mayor when she called me. Um, mayor? You said mayor? The mayor, yeah. She would always call oh, me. Mayor. She said, you're the mayor. You're the next the mayor. mayor. The mayor, yeah. So um, those are kind of some of the um, avenues that I'm exploring while all making sure that sanitation is always taken care of, first and foremost, but also definitely shifting into 
all frontline workers, especially now. Yeah, especially yeah. now. It's so so important. And we're, we're with all of this uh, work in politics, maybe maybe you'll be the next Obama. Maybe I not. would definitely. My suits would be on point. I'm just yes. saying that. <laughs> For sure. ready with the suit game. I got. I, I got enough suits ready. I just need the presidency, the election to come now. I got the suits ready. Just need the election. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, considering that you had so many various jobs at different moments, how did you feel like those um, various jobs may have changed you? You know, what insight into life did you get from doing this, then that, then this, then that? I feel like everything that I've ever done was a humbling experience. Mm. You, you know, you, you sometimes take a job and it's not what you want to do, but there's a lesson to be learned. Yeah. And there's, there's something to receive from it. There's something that you can give it. I'm, I always believe if you give 100%, you'll get 150 back. Mm. So, you know, I take every opportunity, every job I've ever had to just give it 100% and to how to receive the lesson that I'm supposed to get from it. Cause that's how you keep elevating. That's how you get to the next level. Yes. Yes. That's a word. <laughs> that, that is for sure a word. Cool. Well, we like to wrap things up with a quote that I'll have you uh, respond to. Okay. And uh, yeah, just tell me your thoughts about this specific quote I'm, I'm laughing because i'm looking at two and i'm deciding between one um okay here's the quote i speak to everyone in the same way whether he's the garbage man or the president of the university said this is who said that albert einstein yeah that um, abs yeah go ahead Re react to that yeah no that's it's so true because you never know who you're going to need and when you need them. So, and you never know somebody's whole story. So while you may see this garbage man at the university from seven to three, you may not know that he's also a construction worker from four to 11 mm -hmm. and your pipes break. But if you're mean to him at the university, do you think he's going to, you know, want to help you uh, outside of that? So, uh, I always say that that quote is so true because it just speaks to treating everyone like human beings. Yeah. Forget a title, forget a place, forget, a, 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 um, a, I guess, a, a structure or a class. Right. Forget all that. You're a human being, and I'm going to treat you as a human being with respect, with love, with grace, with generosity. And, you know, I think when you live your life like that, you'll find out that more opportunities uh, present themselves to you. you. You're able to grow a lot quicker, a lot faster, and in a healthy way. But some people grow in a really unhealthy way, stepping on toes, being negative, throwing people under the bus and doing all that stuff. But I feel like when you treat people like human beings, Life, 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 life. You know, it, it just, and that's what life is about. Life is about navigating, adjusting, and just taking it all in. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll ask this question just to, to mix it up a little bit. I know, you know, I love your, um, you have a lot of positive insight and optimism and that I'm similar. Like, I'm like, glass is always half full. Sure. Was there an experience where you were a bit frustrated because someone treated you less than your worth? And how did you get over that? How did you overcome any feelings or doubts that people may have had ab about you? Um, yeah, all the time. Um, I mean, people, as a sanitation worker, people already have this perspective of you. Mm -hmm. And they always, you know, one of the myths is that sanitation workers didn't go to college or they're not educated or, mm. um, no one chooses to be a sanitation worker. You have to be a sanitation worker. And one of the most frustrating things is you don't, like I said, you don't know nobody's story holistically. You don't know what is on the outside. If I didn't humble myself and become a sanitation worker, the fave trash man would have never happened. Right. I could have looked at it like, what trash man? I'm not doing that. I'm not picking up trash. I'm too good for that. Yada, 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 yada. You know what I mean? 
Mm-hmm. It was an opportunity. It was, you know, it was a job. It was with the city. It was benefits, union, all that, all those good things. So I took it. And then in it, I realized that I had a lot to learn about what it was to be a, a, a sanitation worker. And through that, the fave trash man was born. But you can't, I never take anything personal mm-hmm. because my joy and my happiness is not your responsibility. Hey. It's not your responsibility. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is totally up to me right. to be happy and to be, to be secure with the choices that I made. Mm-hmm. So if someone, if I give someone that much power to dictate my, my joy and my happiness, then I'm doing something. Yeah. So that's how I live my life. I give no man that power to dictate my happiness at, at all. I give no man that power. My joy is my responsibility, my peace, is my responsibility. So mm. I, I, that's how I live my life. That's how I wake up every day. That's how I keep it one day at a time. That's how I approach this job. That's how I approach your fave trash man. I don't know who I'm helping. I don't know who I'm talking to on social media or on your fave trash man. But if I change one perspective a day, then I'm happy. Yeah. I'm truly happy. Whoa, you, 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 I'm. <laughs> yes, a word, a word, 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 many words, gems dropped. Uh, I try. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Terrell. You are such an inspiration, and it's exciting to hear your story and to like watch how you have uh, transformed a community with with your commitment to saying, you know, I'm going to speak out, and, yeah. and how that has really supported so many other folks in really the city of Philadelphia, and how you're continuing. You're not just like, okay. All right, we, we we talked about sanitation. I'm done. It's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna keep building on this and Yeah, you, know, you got to. Form. You got to. Yeah, you got to. I feel like there's so many lives that need to be changed right now during these times. And the power of one is 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 real. And if I can be an advocate for sanitation and then be an advocate for my community and then be an advocate for Philly, then be an advocate for Pennsylvania, then be an advocate for the United States and be an advocate for the world. If, if God sees fit that that's where my path is going, then I accept. I accept yes. and, and I, I humbly go and walk it. Yes, yes. I, I want to message, message, message. Yes, <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to... Appreciate okay. it. <laughs> um, so it is it is so <laughs> hallelujah um, <laughs> well you all folks please make sure you stay connected with Terrell on Instagram at your fave trash man and just in case you you know you're listening so it's ya y-a fave f-a-v no e trash man okay so, yeah. so make sure you go and follow him and support and stay up to date yes, with what he's doing you. And is there anything else that you want to shout out that you have or whether it's social media accounts or anything? Um, no, I think you did it. You shout out the Instagram. Um, let people know that it is me running my Instagram. I'm the only one that has access to it. So when you ask me something, um, I am the one replying. And that the last thing is just let's all just treat each other like human beings because as my brand would say, it takes all of us. Mm-hmm. It takes all of us. Love it. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I, I look forward to staying connected with you. And, oh, for sure. And in hearing about your uh, your career in politics, your upcoming <laughs> political career. We go, maybe we'll both sit down with Obama. Maybe we'll have a yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. For <laughs> sure. We, we could be president, vice president. We could be hey. the first, first, first uh, Hershey chocolate and snicker vice president yes. <laughs> and, and president. <laughs> And short, short and muscular too. Short yeah, and mu- yeah, yeah, for sure. No, for sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the buffest president known to man. Okay. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I love it. Thanks so much, brother. Oh, no thank you.